You're listening to the GRCC Provost Podcast. Greetings, persons of quality. Welcome to the 2016-17 Provost Podcast Series. This year, we're focusing more on the interview portions of the podcast and a little less on the newsy portions of the podcast, which I am going to be covering in the Provost Post, a monthly newsletter from my office. I'm calling it News from Academic and Student Affairs for Persons of Quality. So I hope that if you haven't read volume one, you'll stay tuned for the subsequent volumes. Based on your feedback, you want to hear more from my interviewees and, and, well, I'm sorry to say less from me. And I can, I can be obliging. So podcast number one is featuring Mr. Rondo Cooper. Rondo, hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Rondo, what is it that you do here at Grand Rapids Community College? I am the director of Grandpa's Community College's Upper Bound program. So basically, on our campus, we have not only college-age GRCC students, but we have students that we're preparing for a college-going future. Would that be accurate? That is very accurate. And so can you explain a little bit more beyond that Mm -hmm. about what Upward Bound is and what you all do in that program? Yes, 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 absolutely. Upward Bound, what we do is we work with low-income, first-generation high school students. These students, we prepare them to go to college. We work out of Ottawa Hills High School, and we work out of U Prep High School. And what we do with these students is we prepare these students to go to college. We have these students go visit colleges, namely Grand Rapids Community College. We have these students um, see different colleges across the nation. We have these students experience different cultural events. We have these students exposed to different persons within the community who will prepare them for their futures. Tell me some of the other schools that you visit. We have visited um, Boston College. Um, in the past, some of our students have seen Harvard College. We've seen um, Toledo. We've seen Oakland College. Our students have seen um, Philadelphia. Um, they've seen an array of colleges, big and small. And it's important that they see big and small because our students, we understand within within our program that everybody's not going to go to MIT. For example, I was a first generation student and I came from Ohio and I started here at the Grand Rapids Community College. And back then it was, Woo-hoo! yes, yes, yes. Back then it was GRJC and wow. I started here. This was a perfect step for me. And I left here and went to Aquinas. And Woohoo! From, yes. Okay. I heard they have some excellent English faculty. Oh. I've just, I mean, I've heard that. I, shout out. I don't do shout outs, but um, if I did do a shout out, I would say a shout out to um, Aquinas College and Grand Rapids Community College. And I left right after that and did my master's at Western. Yeah. What's your master's in? Social work. Social work. Social work. So I'm a therapist by... Uh, by trade. I've been a therapist for about 20 years. Tell me a little bit about your career path and the work you've been doing before you ended up here <laughs> leading our Upward Bound program. You know, I, I told somebody before that I was from Dayton, Ohio, and they said, well, how long have you been in Grand Rapids? And I told them that I left Dayton, Ohio at age 18 and came to Grand Rapids, Michigan. And they said, man, they started counting on their fingers. And they said, you've been here for like over, a little over 20, 20 years. And, <laughs> little, little 20, and they said, you're from Grand Rapids, Michigan now. You can't say you're from Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. And I started laughing. And I said, well, that, that might be true. And so they said that um, that's what you have to claim now. But I've worked in this community since I've been very young, starting working at the parking ramp here at Grand Rapids Community College, 
Um, from there, I've worked at um, Wedgwood Christian Services, Pine Rest. I worked at Bellamy Creek Prison. Um, I have did consulting at the juvenile courts. I've worked at the Kent County Jail. I've been in private practice doing therapy for counseling therapy for a number of years, but I also do um, groups and training for um, human resource organizations in this community as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done a lot of the reentry work for prisoners also. From there, I had an opportunity to do some trainings for Grand Rapids Community College with the developmental department. And I was blessed with an opportunity to work with the Student Success Center. From there, some position, a position opened up. I ended up here um, Hmm. and I love it. Love this work and this work uh, feeds me. And um, I feel like working with the upper bound and working with the students and the families, I think that this is something you get an opportunity to do work where you don't feel like you're actually doing a job. Mm-hmm. You also you feel like you're moving out your life's mission and purpose. This, and I'm not being facetious, but I think that this is something that I would actually do for free. I would do this for... Noah, the- you'll want to cut that little snippet out, okay? Oh, All right. <laughs> But I wink, I, wink, okay. wink, 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 wink. Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> wife, my wife wouldn't want to hear that part. But no, I, I, um, I so believe in um, helping the students that I work with. I so believe in the college's mission of, you know, um, diversity and inclusion. Um, that this is, I believe that this, I found something mm-hmm. that kind of marries with my life's mission mm-hmm. and purpose of helping people. So. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. You didn't know I was going to ask you so much, so many questions about your own experience, but yeah. But now, I, yeah. No, that's I, fine. I that's surprise fine. people like that. Um, I, I'm curious. Um, you left. I'm a dating. dog person. I'm just. Sorry. Oh, you knew uh, I was going to ask yes, that. Yes, I've been listening to the podcast. I'm dog. Just, I'm just, I'm just, I don't okay. know if we even need to continue now, though. Um, <laughs> no, because you know where I am on that continuum: dog <laughs> yes. versus cat person. Um, yeah. You know, I'm curious. As you you left Dayton to come here mm-hmm. and. Uh, come to GRCC, but your your career has really been a path of of service to others. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Have you thought about where do, where does that come from? Does it come from your upbringing, from particular experiences? What oh, yeah. what makes you dedicate you know your life to to people who need guidance, uplifting, support? Wow. Yeah, you know I, I've I've thought about that, and um, I've often wished that. I saw numbers like like some do in like the accounting field or mm-hmm. some other people do. Um, but I don't see that. I think that I see, and it might sound strange, but I see the back of the words that people say. I can hear their stories and their dreams. Mm-hmm. And so I'm a storyteller. I come from a long line of um, pastors. Um, my great-grandfather was a pastor. My grandfather was a pastor. I have an uncle who's a pastor. My uh, aunt is a chaplain. I'm not a pastor, but um, I think that I'm a storyteller, and I think that my life's purpose and mission is to help individuals, groups, and communities to connect with their own personal missions and stories. Mm -hmm. And so this is part of my mission. When I took on this job, the first thing that I told The first thing that I told the young people that I was working with and what I tell young people who come into the program is that your goal is now my mission. That's what that's how I take it on. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that's so that comes from, I guess, that upbringing in that family piece, Mm -hmm. you know, and I seek out like mine and people who are actually moving into that. Um, And it just so happened that I was lucky enough. I want to say lucky, I, I guess blessed to find an institution that also has that same purpose in mind. Your focus on, you know, stories and the the meaning behind the words that really resonates uh, with a former English teacher, right? I see the world in narrative. I see the world as a story. Yes. Um, and they're so powerful. Um, they're not just little, enter- it's not just story just isn't a little entertainment no. thing. You know, it's, it's, so powerful yes. and shapes the world. Stories shape the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember actually a story about you. 
Mm. Don't don't look. It's, it's okay. No, this is okay. That's fine. So here's the story, and it is told. I don't know. It's not a lot of detail here. Okay, but um, Janet Pache. Oh yeah. Former uh, English faculty member here at the college, mm. retired now. Uh, former English department head. I love Miss Pache. You she's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and she's kind of a she's a kind woman, yeah. but she's a stern woman. Stern. Now, I remember her telling me, I don't even know how this happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's telling me a story about you, I think, even even before I knew you. You were in her class. Yes. And I'm I'm trying to put this delicate. Let's just say maybe maybe sometimes mm, your behavior was not 100% perfect collegiate ideal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, definitely. Definitely. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So she kind of... She, she you're, grabbed me in the she's, collar. She's, yes, yeah, she's yes. proud of what she did for you. Yes, yes, yes. I am one of Grand Rapids. I am one of GRJC's or GRCC's success stories, or Grand Rapids the community's success stories, mm-hmm. because um, when my mother entrusted this community with me, with raising me, my mother had me at my mother got pregnant with me at fifteen. So um, I, I came here with $300 in my pocket just trying to figure out my way. Um, so it's, it's, it is, like I said, I'm, I'm excited every day because all I wanted to be was, um, when I was young, all I wanted to be was an eighth grader. Mm-hmm. So for me to be sitting here talking with you mm-hmm. and looking at my students, mm-hmm. um, this, is, this is amazing for me every day. I kind of, you know, I was trying to figure it out, trying to figure out this whole thing about how to be a student. Um, and there were people who kind of, you know, Miss Pache was one of those people who kind of mm-hmm. said, hey, man, you, you're going the wrong way. You know, you need to figure this thing, you know, you need to, you're not majoring in playing cards in the lounge. <laughs> you know, your, your job yeah. is to get this homework done. Yeah. You know, hey, you need to do this paper over uh, for a third time. <laughs> that sounds like, like Janet. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and that's that's happened. Um, um, and I've been open to that process because I want to get better. Mm-hmm. Um, even as a, a director, you know, I want to get better. Mm-hmm. Um, and there have been some times when, hey, you know, okay, you need to redo this part over again. And I'm like, oh. Oh, okay, okay. You know, yeah. because I want to get better. But I think mm-hmm. that's part of the process um, that I'm trying to teach my mm-hmm. students is that life is about, um, um, sometimes life isn't always going to feel good. That growing process is about stretching. And when you're able to be open to that process of stretching, that's okay. How do you think your experiences as a young man, leaving home, coming to Grand Rapids, finding your way, how do you think that influences how you do your work with the young folks we have here today? Uh, You know, I I try to be really open about the pluses and the minuses. Mm -hmm. Um, And I try to always remind them, and they've heard this, but I I try to let them know that they have have two tails. One, the (laughs) T-A-I-L and the T-A-L-E. The T-A-I-L is that genetic part of them that, you know, none of us can control. My facial features and my shoulders and stuff, that looks just like my uncles and my aunts. And, you know, like, oh, yeah, you look just like so-and-so. That's that genetic stuff. But that T-A-L-E, that's that story that um, that I that I have parts of con- that I can control to a certain extent, mm-hmm. um, and I try to let them know that that it's important for me to take responsibility for mm-hmm. how I move forward with that piece, mm-hmm. um, and that um, some good and some of that some of that not so good is going to happen to us, mm-hmm. um, and that in the end everything is going to be okay. If it's not okay, then it's not the end. <laughs> so um, mm-hmm. we just got to keep moving. And I always tell them, they'd be like, oh, Cooper, oh, man, this is this. And I'd be like, okay, that's okay. Keep moving. Keep moving. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's just keep moving. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I try to keep going in the fashion of the mentors and the teachers who have taught me. Um, and I continue to watch. Um, I watch people like you. 
Um, and I watch how you do what you do um, because I want to learn. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I continue to learn. You um, talk about your your mom entrusting you to yeah. this community. Yes. Um, and you said you're a first generation college student. Mm-hmm. Um, I am as well. My parents always sort of told me you're gonna go to college, so I had that expectation, although they had not. And their their view was really that college would give a person choices. Mm-hmm. You w- then you wouldn't have to settle for something you could choose. Because they had never gone to college, they they didn't understand the college world. I mean, they didn't understand. They couldn't help really help me choose a college or help mm-hmm. me figure out what's going on at college. Upward Bound does a lot of that work for students, doesn't it? I mean, isn't that part of the role of Upward Bound to yes. help students understand what they're getting themselves into and what the options are? Right, right. Getting, getting themselves into in a good way. Yeah, we do some of that. We do some of that. But one of the things that I try, one of the things that I'm careful to do is not to take over in a way where the students won't have, because I want them to take some measure of responsibility for their own lives. Mm-hmm. So, um, but no, you're absolutely right in that um, I do, as part of the program, we do provide them with different cultural experiences. For example, you know, I'll I'll take them to see something like Symphony of the Soul Mm -hmm. here in our community, or um, we'll take them to Frederick Meyer Gardens, um, um, things that we want them to see, um, because I believe that once you see it, then you'll say, oh, man, you know, we can achieve these different things, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but you're right. Um, I try to we want them to expand their horizons. I want them to see, do and experience more mm-hmm. within the within the confines of this program. Mm-hmm. And that's um, that's also one of those things, you know, that um, makes Grand Rapids Community College. Um, perfect. I wasn't in Upper Bound and didn't even know about Upper Bound when I was young. But mm-hmm. coming to the college here, um, coming to the Grand Rapids the. JC now the. Community College, the you know, um, there were people. There was a, a supportive community that surrounded themselves around me, and they helped me to experience some different stuff. You know, like a Cedric Ward. Um, mm-hmm. um, um, Mr. Lumpkins, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, Chris Arnold, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Janet Pache, and Miss mm-hmm. Redwine, you mm-hmm. know, um, Audrey Mayfield, um, mm-hmm. you know, um, it was a lot, a lot of people that put themselves, Mr. Foster, I mean, they just kind of mm-hmm. wrapped around me and at times put me in a headlock, you know, when they needed yeah. to, you know, to, yeah. to, to kind of move me forward. I don't think you really often needed the headlock. It, oh, boy. They'll nah. tell you. You know, they'll yeah. tell you. A little headlock. Yeah, yeah. A lot of my football. <laughs> we of all fo- need well, the headlock. On the football field, they did, yeah. We all needed coaches. a headlock. The metaphorical right. headlock. Metaphorical. Okay. Metaphorical yeah, headlock. Yeah, definitely. Right. All right. You talked about various colleges that, that folks have that you've traveled to and you've taken the students to Boston, Philadelphia, other places. So part of one of the big events of this program is isn't it a summer trip somewhere exciting? Yes. And that's and then in that location you would visit college some colleges and universities. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you went where this past summer? Every summer we do a 6-week summer camp. Um, and during the summer camp we have our students take a series of classes. We do biology, we do a foreign language, we do science, and we do math. Um, and then at the end of the sixth week of the summer program, we will take them somewhere in the country to visit colleges and to to experience some different cultural attractions within that particular place. This year, we were afforded the opportunity to take them to Boston, which was a wonderful experience. Last year, we were able to see um, St. Louis. St. Louis. Awesome. St. Louis. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Cooper, what was the most surprising thing you you learned on the trip to Boston? I know you were telling me about this a few weeks ago. Boston. I was... Most... The most surprising? Surprising thing you never, ever knew before. Oh, yes. Um... Okay, I'm embarrassed to say it, but you know what? Um, my life is an open book, and if and if and if my life could be used to help somebody else to be less ignorant about this, uh, Plymouth Rock 
is not. Ooh, I'm sorry, Vicky, but Plymouth Rock is not a place. <laughs> Plymouth Rock is an actual rock. It's a rock. It's a rock, um, and it's it's a magnificent rock too. I mean, <laughs> it was, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a landscaping rock. <laughs> there I mean, you go. It's been in the it, backyard. Who knew? Who knew? It, <laughs> it was you, you would think like <clears throat> Glen Cove is a place. Plymouth Rock is a place, <clears throat> but it's an actual rock. It's an actual rock. I mean, it's. it's I don't know how they can <clears throat> prove though that it's the same rock. <clears throat> After all those years. I mean, I read the books, you know, all that stuff, but somehow I missed that part. Yeah, so, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, you know, so that was, um, so that was a, a fact. Deep learning is happening on yeah, these expeditions. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, so I was. I you was, were kind of like a group of pilgrims on your own. Yeah. Headed toward Plymouth Rock. I was expanded. That's that right. Time, you know, so, I mean. It was a voyage of exploration. It was. It's, was. that's the story. That's the, that's the story. That is the nugget. Upward Bound is a voyage of of exploration. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm deeper. I'm better for it, for that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, th thank you very much. Now I'm going to, I'm going to ask the students some questions and it's okay. going to be awesome. It's going to be great. All right. I have Hakeem, Shaheem, and Christine. And the first thing I'm going to ask them to do is say hello, tell me what school they go to, and tell me what their favorite thing, so it's three things, name, where do you go to school, your favorite thing about Upward Bound, okay? That's what we're starting with. Hakeem, you first. No, I, I can go first. Or Shaheem, you can go first. You're not shy at all. All right, hello, my name is Shaheem Siggers, and I go to U-Prep, and my favorite thing from Upward Bound is it takes us to places like we never been to, because you know how you like, what you dream, dreamt about a place, I always want to go, like, I want to see how this place is. It's kind of nice to actually get actually get to experience that. My name is Christine Starr. I am now a senior at Ottawa Hills, and my favorite thing about Upper Bound is that it has been a life-changing for me. Tell me one way that you you feel this has been really life-changing. Well, by the quote, we go. I just go by, if you want it, you go get it. In my mind, when I was in ninth grade, it was like college, 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 here I come. I'm almost there, even though I have three years to go. Still, college was on my mind, and I didn't know how I was going to reach that point until I met Mr. Cooper, and it gave me a little more of a boost to mm -hmm. want to go. Um, my name is Hakeem Siggers. I go to University Prep Academy, and the favorite thing I like about Upper Bound is that we get to go on like field trips at the after all the school work that we did over the summer. So that's pretty fun. Did you enjoy Boston? It was nice. It was like a kind of um, of a culture shock. Like the people there, it's like, it's not like gonna rap. It's like, they kind of like ruled a little bit. Different environment. Yeah, it's like different environment. And like a couple, like a lot of weirdos. Yeah, it's like a lot of weird <laughs> people. Like, I think that's kind of like every big city. Like you go to, mm -hmm. it's like you got the weirdos. And it's kind of disgusting. Christine, what, what did you think was most memorable about the, the trip to Boston? I got to visit the College of Boston, and that was really fun, and I was able to connect with others and mm -hmm. be able to check my choices. Hakeem and Shaheem, can you give me an example of how it wasn't what you expected, and it sort of challenged maybe a stereotype you have? People don't care if they jaywalk. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, they, like, they really don't care about their life like that. They just, like, jaywalk in front of a car. Like, they don't care, like, if a car comes, they still jaywalk. So that was kind of, like, confusing to me. Mm hmm I see mm -hmm. people doing that. Bustling big city, you saw very packed. different, yeah. yeah, packed, different kinds of people that you don't typically see, wearing yeah. kind of anything they want, kind of. And, and also what's funny is, like, like, on every corner, you probably see some type of, um, Concession stand when he said like shirts, like school shirts, like Harvard shirts or um, MIT shirts or mm -hmm. some other shirts. And I thought like, oh, I got this type of exclusive shirt. But <laughs> what I found out, it's like everybody is selling that stuff. Oh, we got to get on a boat and we were there for like oh, yeah. two, three hours. And um, we basically circled around the boat to see the waves, uh, whales up close. Huh? Had you ever been on the ocean? No. No. Nope. 
What'd you think of the whales? Pretty amazing. Uh, pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Okay, my, my stereotype was I thought it was going to jump out like uh, like some whales do. Uh -huh. They didn't. So they didn't jump completely out of the water. Yeah, like yeah, like you know how you got all them documentaries like this. Yeah. Oh, the whales just jumping. Yeah. Like pretty so, much the arch of the back and the yeah. and the all right. and the and tail. You don't see the whole thing. Yeah, right. yeah, you don't. So a myth dispelled. I wanna I wanna turn this to a slightly more serious question. I'm thinking about uh, Mr. Cooper's talking about the tail T A I L and the tail T A L E. And I want to ask you, as you're now at Ottawa Hills and at University Prep, where right now are you thinking of going to college? What are you thinking of studying? And think down the road a little bit, 10, 20 years. I know that's a really long time. How does the T-A-L-E play out over the next uh, 10 or 20 years? Where do you want to be in 10 or 20 years? Michigan State, I want to go there. Or like U of L. Or probably Oak, Oakland, because I think that's a really good school. Mm -hmm. What I want to be, I want to be like a plastic surgeon, but I really don't know, because uh, that's like a lot of school. I probably want to be like a PA. Mm -hmm. So that's like less school, because I think PA is probably known as much as doctors, mm -hmm. but less school. So that's interesting. Or I probably want to uh, do some like business or marketing. I got a lot of options. so I You got a lot of options. And where I want to see myself is, uh, I want to see myself like, like have my own business, like a successful business, and like donate money to like other, you know, charities, whatever, mm -hmm. like Upper Bound, whatever. Yeah, give back. Yeah, and give back to, um, give back to the people that helped you get where you at. Mm -hmm. So that's what I believe. From twenty to thirty years, I want to see myself graduating from Michigan State. And I want to be a dentist, and I hope I never change because I am so interested in it. But later, I just want to be able to have a happy spot where I am comfortable with and able to connect with my family more. Great. Um, for me, the colleges that I'm interested in, or universities, I would say, is I'm really, really interested in Oakland. I'm most probably going to go there, or um, U of M or Michigan State or CMU. Mm -hmm. What I want to be, I want to do surgery, but today I'm kind of like on the fence of it because I already don't want to be in schools for like 14 <laughs> years. That's like, I'm going to be like 30 years old. Wow, yeah. that old. Yeah. Oh man, I can't even wrap my head around that. <laughs> and then like, and then like the hours you work, like 50, 60 hours a week, that's kind of like And then crazy. you like on call and mm -hmm. you can't like, I want to be a dad in like 20 years with a family. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to be a, a surgeon, I'm not going to be able to take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. And, and be, say, like, you got, like, a you, uh, like you out on, a, like, an event, like a birthday party. And then it's, like, a, a pager. Your pager mm -hmm. going off. You got to go somewhere. So that's, like, uh, that kind of sucked. Though. That sucks. So, so you want to you wanna make sure you have a life-work balance. With the family. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm going to, I've gotten the crazy idea since... Shaheem and Hakeem, you have the same last name that you may be brothers. No, yeah, we're yeah, twin brothers. We're twins. <laughs> I'm pretty sharp that way, huh? Are you gonna go to the same college? Uh, most likely. Yeah, yeah. To save all money. So like, you. Think you get a discount if you have twins? <laughs> 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 Do they? There are grants out there for twins. You're kidding me. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Did this podcast go like you expected it to, Christine? Yeah, I was a little nervous, but no, I'm yeah. more comfortable. Okay. One one word that best describes Mr. Cooper. Oh, uh, we can edit it out if we need to. Weird at times. <laughs> weird at times. That's three words, but I'll take it. Okay. It's it's kind of sad because Cooper doesn't have a one word for it. <laughs> <laughs> There's not just one word. But he is outstanding. It's outstanding. Awesome. Uh, charismatic. That's charismatic. That's great. I think he's, he's a pretty good guy. Well, I appreciate you all coming to chat with me. I know that for all of you, the T-A-L-E ends very well with much success and uh, all the best and good luck to you. And as Christine says, you want it, you go get it. I'm going to remember that now. I think that's a wrap. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, but I know my listening audience is waiting for the traditional send-off. That's right. So I want to say this to you students 
to all of our students, faculty and staff, to all of my colleagues at GRCC, please remember that I am very proud of you and the work that you do. You are the highly esteemed, much appreciated faculty, staff, and students of a very happy provost. And we all say this together. One, two, three, boom! boom. You've been listening to the GRCC Provost Podcast, produced by GRCC Media Technologies. Join us next episode for more Provost.